So, hi, I'm Taylor Kuntz, and I will be presenting to you today about weather variability in the Shenandoah Valley, a support for this uh, industrial hemp industry. Um, my advisors throughout the process were Dr. Nicole Radswell and Dr. Mike Renfro, who is in biology. Um, okay, so the motivation for us doing this is hemp has legal, I mean, uh, hemp has <laughs> recently been legalized for um, industrial for research purposes so at JMU we are exploring all the factors that can contribute to a productive hemp crop to help aid Virginia lawmakers in their decision of making it legal um, we had a team of five people uh, three of them Evan Justin and Nick they looked at the agricultural factors and the soil factors. Um, ben, who just presented, did the soil and political context, no, social and political context. And then I'm looking at the weather and seeing if that had a, um, played a role in it. I characterized the weather at the two different farm locations. Um, so, the whole process started, I guess in June is when they planted the seeds, and then in August 2016, we went out and harvested the hemp crops. So what you see on the left, that is a um, close up of the hemp crop where you can see like little brown patches on there. Those are the seed clusters. Um, and then that on the right is the hemp field. That's at Rhodes Farm in Port Republic. Um, and that farm, uh, you can't really tell from the picture, but the hemp stalks are like over six feet high. We had to go in there and like, get our way through to get square meter plots and bag up all the samples. All in all, it was 20 samples and bag them all up and take them back to the lab. We got back to the lab. We had to, first we harvested all the uh, seeds off of the hemp stalks. And then we had to sort through and get all the like dead seeds out and all the ones that weren't mature yet. And after we did that, we counted the seeds up and bagged them up and we took so we had those measurements for seed count, seed weights, and then we did other measurements like the height of the stalk, the diameter of the stem, um, and that's all what Evan and Nick and Justin focused on with their agricultural factors. Um, but what I'm gonna talk to you about, I'll start with the background of industrial hemp, and then I'll go on to the problem statements. We'll look at my data collection and analysis, and then the, re the discussion of the results. So, background. Um, Hemp is an environmentally alternative to many products that we use in America currently. Like, you can go to stores and find hemp-based lotions now. You, they make paper, plastic, clothing, like the, ring, the range of products made from hemp goes on and on and on. Um, it can also be used by farmers and to like remediate their soils. It can get out heavy metals and like toxins from the soil. And it can also act as a natural herbicide and pesticide, so you don't have to use the harmful chemicals. Um, and currently, in the U.S., we import a lot. Like I read, it was in the um, there was a report published by the Con Congressional Research Service where they said that in 2015 we imported 78.2 million um, dollars worth of hemp seed and hemp fibers. So if we can get it to where we can have it legally grown in Virginia, uh, that'll cut down so much on the cost and the energy used for importing it here. Um, so we had two problem statements that I um, answered. And the first one will be concerning the Rhodes Farm in Port Republic. We used weather from two weather stations. One of them was at the Shenandoah Airport and one of them is at Rhodes Farm, there was a personal weather station. Um, my goal was to figure out if the observed weather at Rhodes Farm was different from the observed weather at the Shenandoah Airport. If the weather, the significance of this is that if there is no difference, then we can use the more reliable data from the Shenandoah Airport uh, weather station because the personal weather station is gonna have, I mean, there's data, but it's not as reliable. Um, and then the second problem statement is with the farm in Albemarle, Albemarle County, which is Walden Farm. And there we use data from three uh, weather stations. One of them was at the Charlottesville Airport. One of them was called Free Union. And then another one was at Walden Farm, his personal weather station. So again, the significance is we wanna see if there is no difference because if there isn't, then we can use more reliable data. 
Um, and the whole goal is to use this in the future to um, determine if there's a difference between the observed weather at Rhodes Farm and the observed weather at Walden Farm, because if there is a difference, then that could have played a role, could have been a factor for um, difference in crop yields. Uh, so, data collection, here I'll just show you. These are the locations of the two different farms. So up there at the top, that's the Rhodes Farm. And then this one right here is Walden Farm in Charlottesville. Um, on the left there, you see the weather stations we use. Up at the top right corner is the little red dot. That's um, Rhodes Personal Weather Station. And then the bottom left is the airport where we collected the uh, data from there. And then bottom picture, same deal, the red dot is the um, Walden Farm weather station. And then up top you see Free Union weather station. And then this one right here, that is um, Charlottesville Airport. So this will just give you an idea of like the vicinity, how close they are. Um, so on to methodology. This table, it'll tell you like the for this left column, that's for the problem statement number, and then it tells you the research question and the statistical test I used. When I um, ran my test, I used our software to do the analysis, and for all of these, I used a paired t-test, and basically a paired t-test allows me to compare two different sets of data to determine if there's a significant difference among those sets of data. Um, here I looked at average daily temperature, dew points, um, high temperatures, average and maximum wind speeds and then total precipitation. And for a research question 7 through 12, I used three other statistical tests. One of them was the chi-square test of independence where I take two sets of data and I figure out if there's a relationship or if they're dependent of each other. Um, here I looked at precipitation at both locations. And then I used a one proportion Z test to determine the um, proportion of gusty days at the farm. And the one-way ANOVA test was used for uh, research questions 10 through 12 to answer problem statement 2 uh, concerning the Charlottesville location where I used one-way ANOVA to compare three sets of data to determine if there's a significant difference. When there was a significant difference, I had to use the Turkey HSD test to determine where within the data the difference lies. Um, so the analysis. This, I'll just show you an example of like basically what I did for each um, research question. This is for the first one where I looked at average daily temperatures. Uh, you can see right here in the box plot where the left one is Shenandoah Airport and the right one is Rhodes Farm. And the thick black bar you see that is representative of the average daily temperature at both locations and you can tell they're like both around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so you can kind of, you would, just by looking at that, you could say like, oh, the average daily temperatures are the same, there's no difference. But you have to run the statistical analysis. So that's where that equation up there comes in play. That is the equation for the test statistic, which I used to determine the p-value. Um, so just briefly, that equation, you use variables for the means of both sets of data and divide it by the square root of the standard deviations over the number of samples. So, that sounds a little complicated, but luckily, we use our software, and you just type in, you import the data into the program with statistical analysis software, import the data, assign variables to different data sets, and just use the R command t-test, and it'll give me all the results that I need. So, you can see, as I got in my equation, and I got a t-test, I mean, a, t a statistical, um, test statistic of 1.63 and then where does it say right here it gives me a t of 1.628 um, so they're the same so then with that information it gives me a p-value of 0.1126 which that is what I use to determine if there's a uh, significant difference and with the p-value of that <coughs> I would fail to reject the null but I'll get into that later um, this is an analysis for research question seven with the chi-square test of independence. Um, this table is a little, I'll explain it to you really quick. It's, um, 
So this is for Shenandoah Airport. Zero equates to, the research question was um, if weather was observed at the location. So zero would be there was no precipitation observed at Shenandoah Airport, whereas this column with, the, with this row with the one would be precipitation was observed. Um, so you can see in Shenandoah Airport for the zero, there's total 11 days where there was no precipitation observed at Rhodes Farm, where nine of those days, I mean at Shenandoah Airport, and then nine of those days, there was also no precipitation at Rhodes Farm. Same kind of thing with when precipitation was observed. There are 14 total days where precipitation was observed at the Shenandoah Airport, and then out of those 14 days, 10 of those days also had precipitation observed at Rhodes Farm. So that seems to be, it kind of outweighs um, where they had differences in their observations. So when you run the test, that's another complex equation where you have to plug in the numbers from the table and did all that, got a test statistic of 5.03, use that to get the p-value. But I run it in R and get the same thing, test statistic of 5.03, p-value of 0 0.02. And then that I will reject the null hypothesis that they're independent of each other. So here's a summary of my results. Um, in this you could see Whenever P is less than alpha, that's when you reject the null. Um, so you will see where I reject the null hypothesis by, it's indicated by the three stars in the significance column on the far right. Um, you can see for research questions one through six, I failed to reject the null on most of them, which means the null hypothesis was that there is no difference, and I failed to reject that. Um, Research question two, however, I rejected the null that there is no difference, which means there may be a difference within the data. Um, for seven through eight, I mean seven through 12, same kind of thing. Um, for seven and eight, the chi-square test of independence, I rejected the null for both of them, but the null hypothesis for a chi-square test is that the um, observations are independent of each other. And in this case, I rejected that, which means they might, I mean, they're not independent on each, of each other. Um, 10, 11, and 12, same deal. They're kind of similar to the uh, pair T test in their null hypothesis, which is um, there is no difference. And for 11 and 12, I rejected the null. So I had to go run a turkey HSD test to see where the difference lies. and. When I did that, I came to the conclusion that there's a difference within the free union uh, station. But get into that. The discussion and conclusion. So, okay, after analyzing all of the data for Rose Farm and the Shenandoah Airport, I came to the conclusion that there is no difference among the weather observed at these two locations. Um, with that, we can conclude that the recommended station used for Rose Farm will be Shenandoah Airport. So this table just shows you where the differences were and where they were the same observations. Um, and as you can tell, most of the variables tested were the same. Um, for problem statement two, after analyzing all the data, I found yes, there is a difference among the three locations. Um, but as I said, I ran the Turkey HSD test. And when I ran that test, I found that the difference was with free union whereas Charlottesville Airport and Walden Farm were similar. They had the similar observations for total precipitation, maximum temperature, and minimum temperature. So recommendation for Walden weather would be Charlottesville Airport. That means when in the future, when we try to compare Walden Farm and Rhodes Farm, we can use the reliable data from the Shenandoah Airport, and we can use the reliable data from Charlottesville Airport. Um, and that's it. Oh, are there any questions? No questions? Okay. Well, like in my acknowledgments, um, Glenn Rhodes and Brian Walden, they were the farmers at um, uh, in Poor Republican in Charlottesville. Dr. Nicole Radswell helped me a lot throughout the process. Dr. Mike Renfro. Um, who basically is the head of all this, 
he's the one who started the hemp um, research, right? And then Ben Steen, Nick Gentile, Justin No, and Evan Hilton were my teammates um, when we were collecting the data like out there in the field for hours, hours, and hours, and hours. In the lab for hours and hours. So couldn't have done without them either. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs>